Mama always said, trailer is as trailer does. <laughs> <laughs> and this trailer does at least give us a taste of, of a little bit of what the tone and vibe of this series is going to be. So I think it might be a good idea for us to do one of our famous uh, scene-by-scene, frame-by-frame breakdowns of all the action happening in the trailer itself and uh, provide whatever kind of analysis we can with this brief taste of the upcoming next Star Wars live action series, The Acolyte. It starts off with a bunch of kids sitting in the, what we presume is the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Mm-hmm. It has that sort of room aesthetic to it, you know. Uh, no furniture, uh, just a bunch of mats to sit on. The room is circular because that's the the circle of life. And we're sitting crisscross applesauce, as the kids yes, call it. Yes, indeed. Yes, we are. Well, most of us. Uh, well, I don't I think, think that dude can. I don't think he can yeah. make it quite. I don't think his knees bend that a little, way. <laughs> little difficulty uh, working that out. But, uh, yeah, they do the best they can. So. Right. All right. Let's, you ready uh, to roll it? Yeah, let's roll it and uh, right. see what happens here. All right. Here we go. Close your eyes. And I'll miss you tomorrow. I'll kiss you. Your eyes. <laughs> All the younglings here, as the Jedi Master is talking to them. We must not trust them. And a uh, purple. Let's take a look at this here. So this is, you know, if you if you if you look at the difference, the contrast, and of course in the Jedi topes and all of the beiges, not a whole lot of color here, and then. Boom, they hit you with this uh, dark purple uh, robed figure. I'm assuming it's a female. Very slight frame here. Oh, so that's obviously Amanda Sternberg. Am, am I saying her name correctly? I, I should get my notes out in front of me. Mm. Um, yeah, Amanda Stenberg. Mm-hmm. That's her character, May. The assassin, May, the assassin, yes. and that's that's a that's a real name for an assassin, May. That really sends shivers down my spine to hear May is hunting me down. It's like, <laughs> what what made them hold back? Why didn't they just call her like Daisy May or something? You know, make her <laughs> make it real well, homey for us. Maybe it's like Grace Jones in uh, A View to a Kill. Maybe it's May Day. May, May Day. Day. <laughs> now that's a name that strikes fear, but just May, May. Or maybe she's um, May the 4th. May- <laughs> They're already marketing. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? The show comes out June the 4th. You guys missed it by a whole month. Oh. But well, yeah, that's yeah. this is her character, the assassin, May. Okay. Going through one of those kind of typical Star Wars uh, marketplaces out on the street, Heavily, it looks like. Populated. Heavily, Heavily yeah. populated. One thing I noticed about season three of The Mandalorian when they were hanging out like in the town square in um, Navarro and the pirates were raiding and people were running for their lives, it didn't feel very populated to me. It Dude, it like seemed the, like the whole town had about 11 people. Yeah, and we kept just, seeing the same people over and over. Right, running by the camera. <laughs> right. But I mean, this one, it, it seems there's definitely a lot more people. It has more of that Rogue One vibe. Yes. When Jin and Cassian were walking through the marketplace on Jetta, Jetta City. And um, that's uh, it's more of the vibes I'm getting from this. Obviously, a big difference between this and The Mandalorian, too, is none of this was shot on the volume. Mm. It's all shot on location with practical sets um, in England. When I say on location, I mean, like, in a real place, you know. Right, right, right. I'm sure a lot of this was shot on sound stages and whatnot, but um, they are actually within practical sets. Yes. All right. Tell me what comes into your mind. And this looks like uh, maybe a cantina or a restaurant here. Yeah, it's a like someone's eating salad. It's, <laughs> is someone having a salad? Yeah, That's someone is looks having a me. salad. <laughs> you can even see the croutons. <laughs> this will be showing up at Galaxy's Edge here in a couple months. Yeah. You yeah. can get the well, Acolyte salad. Salad and salad dressing. <laughs> you'll be, you know, like instead of Paul Newman's, you'll be getting uh, Kyle Newman's. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, there's some restaurant or canteen or something. Life. Balance. I see fire. Fire. And there's Carrie Ann Moss. There from she the is. So a so lot of fans looks, are very excited about her presence in this show. At least the way this is cut, of course, you know they can do so much with trailers. It would you would assume that May is rendezvousing with uh, Carrie Moss's character. I yeah, think. maybe, think maybe she plays because she's Carrie walking. Moss, she she's plays walking. a Jedi named Master Indara. That's Carrie Ann Moss. Right. So here Master you got Indara. the back of May, and I think Carrie Ann Moss is there in the in the background. Right there, if you can kind of see her, she's up against the wall right under the light to the left. Talking to someone. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, boom. Yeah, I think that is the same scene. Some hand-to-hand -hand right. combat. And it looks like it's even happening in the same yeah. locale. Right, the, the, the texture on the walls looks similar and the lighting looks similar. So, yeah. You see Carrie Ann Moss, and she's clear, clearly wearing Jedi robe. Hand to hand combat with the assassin May. May is wearing a mask. She apparently has, uh, you know, hang ups from COVID still. And she's <laughs> look at that. Right oh, my gosh. You're right. It does look like a, like one of those, uh, those tight masks. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's, she has, um, you know, low immunity. Um, and uh, so, and, and knives. She's she's got the knives dressed in purple. Her hair is purple. A much yeah. different look than yeah. what I thought we would be getting from the actress Amanda Stenberg in this show because she presents herself so differently in real life. I mean, obviously she's acting here. So, but it's it's kind of a striking look. It, it doesn't look anything really like she does in real life. Granted, there is that mask over her face, but yeah. I find the hair to be really striking. Someone is killing Jedi. All right, let's back that up a little bit. And the yellow, is that a yellow blade? Yellow, orange blade? He says someone is killing Jedi, and... And she's stabbing at someone. Stabbing at somebody, but I don't see a... It, yeah, it looks like it's just a, a, a knife or a, a little dagger or something. Yeah, and Stabbing at a, someone in white robes. And that's that looks to be May again. Yeah, that's May again. Yeah. With the mask mm -hmm. and the... Yeah. Uh, and then they're cutting. And then here come the, the kids. And yeah, Jim, you're right. That is, that is a yellow saber for sure. Yeah, first time we ever saw that was uh, Ray at the end of Rise of Skywalker, so that's now a thing. Sense. And uh, by the way, and I, I can bring this up uh, after this, if unless Jim, on your notes, you have some of these character names. A lot of these character names have emerged because of the uh, Hasbro presentation that went on earlier this week, where a lot of these action figures in the Black Series and in the Vintage Collection were announced, and so we got some of the some of the names. Yes, yes. I, I don't have them all in front of me, but uh, he's definitely a Jedi of some sort. For sure. All right. And then we see, okay, so it looks like maybe some devastation here, like aftermath of a of a big bomb or an explosion or something as they're looking out. Uh, it, may, it may be something that... Maybe or just that's morning fog, you know. Could be morning fog. Looks like I they're going the into... A, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a bunch of Jedi, about eight of them. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're about ready to go into uh, what looks to be a very sinister forest. And uh, we'll see what kind of uh, wackiness happens to them. Oh, well, and here's, here's our, your... my favorite. <laughs> this is the Wookiee Jedi. Yes. Can't remember, yeah. can't remember his name. I keep trying to say Lobaka. But <laughs> Did you say Lobaka? <laughs> Lobaka was a character from the expanded universe in the... Um, Oh. In the Young Jedi Knight novels with uh, Jason and Jaina Solo. Lobaka, get out, yeah, really? They hung out, yeah, they hung out with Lobaka. <laughs> it was it was, was there a high Baca? <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I mean, you know, they, they love that Baca name, those Wookiees, don't they? I bet Harrison Ford would have loved to hang out with high Baca. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So, yeah, here we got the uh, Wookiee Jedi. And I think this is, I believe this is the Jedi Master that we see it. Ah, damn it. Fat oh, you fingers. went back to the beginning of the yeah, thing. Fat fingers, my um, bad. Here, let me. Uh, Lee Young Jay plays Master Soul. And yes, he is the Jedi we see in the, at the beginning. Ah, okay. Talking to the young, the younglings. And uh, he's, he's, he's gesturing at a guy who I can tell in these few frames is, is, is clearly overacting. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's chewing scenery, this guy. You know? But it looks like um, he's the Jedi mind trick is at play here right now. Yeah. This guy is uh, spitting some details about something maybe he doesn't want to reveal. Or he's just so overwhelmed by the influence of the Force that he is, uh, looks like he's about ready to poop his pants. <laughs> he's got kind of a furry coat on, too. It reminds me of uh, that, kind of that furry outfit that the original Jabba actor was wearing. Ah, uh, Han, my boy! <laughs> I love yeah. him. Yeah, kind of like that furry acorn look. What happened? Uh, I sensed the darkness. All right. Uh, I don't know. I was going to back up and take a look at this ship. Yeah, I don't know that we've... I mean, we're not going to have seen any of this stuff. I guess if you're into the High Republic and maybe some of this stuff is going to be Easter eggs from the oh, comics. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this probably has a, a whole different meaning to you folks. According to comments Leslie Headland has made that the show is riddled with Easter eggs for not only the High Republic, but the Expanded Universe, uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, even mm. particular Clone Wars episodes... There'll be uh, something to note of consistency uh, between those, you know, making really nice Easter eggs. So we'll see how that all plays out. It's a nice but, payoff you know, for the High Republic fans, you got to say, you know, that have been sticking with the books and sticking with the comics. I this think nice so, but I don't think you have to be steeped in that story to jump on board with the Acolyte at the beginning. I don't think. Well, they did say know, that about Ahsoka, too. And we kind of found oh, that to be yes, Ahsoka was 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 mired in Star Wars Rebels, mm -hmm. and uh, even a little bit of the Clone Wars. So much so that I really think of Ahsoka as Rebel Season Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. So I just wonder if what they define, the creators define, as there being learning or catch up to, that's necessary. Versus what we define as as being necessary, um, we'll I, see. I think we'll find out. I think this story will stand alone mm. and on its own two feet. Okay. It's the darkness. Boy, May is getting a lot of action in this trailer, man. They are really, uh, as they say in the pro wrestling biz, they are really trying to put her over. Yes, here. yes. We're seeing a lot of martial arts stuff going mm -hmm. on here. Wire work. Which I'm not particularly fond of. You know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Matrix. And it's back up it's here. It's all been done characters. before. Yeah, just not in Star Wars. Um, I do really dig the the notion of being able to hang out with Jedi Council members and the Jedi Temple. I like that idea that we're going to be able to spend some time in the, some of those some of those locations. You're bringing up High Republic. This character that you freeze-framed on here is a Jedi named Vernestra Rowe, and she's played by Rebecca Henderson. She was Her character, Vernestra, was a teenager during the events of the High Republic, and this is like 100 years later. So ah, she had, okay. So, uh, so a pretty big gap between the hmm. furthest publishing... The, the the publishing timeline and then what we're getting here clearly so, yes okay clearly. okay gotcha all right we got another dude here um noticing you know all of the control panels and pads and doodads and greeblies looking very star wars these little details that you see like on the side of the door here that that character his name is kimmer kimmer q i m i r Maybe Kimmer. Kimmer? Kimmer? Or Kimmer. It could be Kimmer or Kimmer. He's a former smuggler and traitor. Oh. And he's played by Manny Jacinto. Mm -hmm. 
I'm noticing a very young cast here so far, for the most part, with with a couple of exceptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Carrie Ann Moss is a little older. Uh, uh, the uh, Master Soul actor, who is um, from uh, the Squid Game series. Oh, Lee that's Young right. Yeah. Jay, Lee Young Jae. Um, those guys are a little bit older. Yeah, but everyone else, I mean, has seemed, and, and I don't know if they're major players in the show, but that whole group of Jedi that we saw, a lot of them looked pretty darn young. This guy looks real young. Yes. More, more Jedi. Jedi. And the Wookiee Jedi's name is Kelnaka. Kelnaka. Kel All right. Kelnaka. And then you have some younger folk hanging around i believe one of them is a jedi knight named yord fondar or yord fandar he is a, a jedi temple guardian um you have mm -hmm. jackie lon is she there i don't see maybe that's her with the jackie lon <laughs> jackie lon she's oh, a bad one okay i thought you said, I was like well, that's a little Jack on the nose wouldn't you say <laughs> jackie <laughs> Jackie um, Lon. <laughs> and okay. some other younger characters who may or may not have action figures on the way. <laughs> A darkness rises. So more of the Carrie Ann Moss versus May fight. Do we have yes. Carrie? What's Carrie Ann Moss's character name? Do you have that happen? Do Master that? Indara. Master Indara. Oh. Indara. Yes. Jim, I'm going to have to have these tattooed on my forehead. When we start our after <laughs> You'll shows. pick up on it pretty fast. Yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. She's referred to as the protector of the peace. Uh -huh. the act. That's a, a great Jedi master of physical and mental skill. That's oh, here's this dagger, by the way, that we were, she was coming after the, the Jedi in the white robes. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Carrie Ann Moss's character, Master Indar. Doing is, that classic Jedi move where they hold the hand up. Yeah. You know, like every picture of Ashley Eckstein with a fan, they're always doing that. <laughs> holding right. the hand up. It always looks like to me they're saying, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> you know? But I guess it's a force push of some sort. Oh, now okay. she looks important. Oh, she's she's very important. Um, she's so important. Her name is um Mother Anisea. A leader of a coven of witches. Oh. Not necessarily one of those night sisters, but she is a witch and she is a leader of these other witches who really value their independence and they're really keen on preserving their history and, uh, that's really all I got on them. Inspired by Night Sisters, maybe, but not a Night Sister. Okay. Per se. Now I'm yes. looking at I'm looking at I can't help but I'm trying to make a connection here, and maybe I need to stop doing this. Mm. But after The Rise of Skywalker came out, the 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 that that the all the people that were trying to bring Palpatine back on Exegol. They yes. were called acolytes. Yes, acolytes. And then ever since that, and then with the announcement of this series, the acolyte, I started thinking maybe there's some sort of connection with whatever this tribe or this group or this religion or you know whatever it is between what they're going to be talking about here and those people that were on Exegol. I wonder first, will will Exegol? as a planet or a system feature in this at all. Mm. And these people behind this witch, they kind of look like they're decked out a little bit, like the the acolytes that you saw in the crowd mm -hmm. in The Rise of Skywalker that were all chanting for Palpatine. Yes. They, yes. I wonder if they can do the coordinated chanting as well as those folks on Exegol. Right? <laughs> I was really impressed by that. It was like... You know, being at the most well rehearsed soccer match of all well, time. I was wondering what that rehearsal might have been like, you know? Like, no, 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 no. Chant yeah. like you mean it. All right, let's hear from the left. Let's hear <laughs> from the right. <laughs> you in the back. Come on, altos. We need more alto. 
Let's hear the girls. Now the guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, where's a Family Guy uh, parody yeah. when you need one? That's just you had right no for idea. It. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, you knew he was evil, you knew he was twisted, and you knew he was fueled by the dark side. But did you know he was a top-notch entertainer once you hit that stage? <laughs> right, well, you know all, all those tin up. pot. All the great dictators throughout world history always had a little bit of the drama, you know, they, that oh, they yeah. could bring with them. So I'm sure Palpatine is, is no different. He recognizes the importance of the theatrics mm -hmm. behind the role and the position. I mean, he the costume alone. The crowd little, he plays <laughs> to the crowd. Right. You know, that's, that's what really made him the, uh, the supreme <laughs> Sith. Is, oh. is he knew how to work it. <laughs> Well, it looks like this uh, witch here is uh, working it as she is making a very regal entrance here. It's played and by we see... Jody Turner Smith. She plays Mother Anasea. Mother Anasea. Okay. Yeah. And then here's more May. Looks like this looks like maybe May running. Oh, maybe not. The hair's maybe a little too short. But someone's running with uh, fire. Okay, Jim, we just saw a, a few minutes ago. What I said was looked like maybe a uh, an explosion or something that happened in a forest. Oh. And now we're seeing a forest ablaze, so maybe it was a fire of some sort. Right, and then that's the morning after. Now it does not appear. Fire. It does not appear she's wearing Jedi robes. So, I'm thinking that could be May. Maybe it is May. I think it is. Okay. And also remember at the very beginning of the trailer, when Master Soul was asking all those younglings about their feelings or what they could see when they close their eyes. And the one girl said, fire. I see fi fire. Right. I see fire. <laughs> and then they all broke into the 1877 Cars for Kids song. And uh, I don't know. Is that a Chicago thing? Maybe it is. But uh, 1877 Kids? Well, it's it? just cars for kids is this <laughs> oh. annoying jingle that's been playing on the radio forever and uh, uh, I, I think, think it's a Chicago I think that thing. might be a regional thing might be <laughs> we all know. have those in every you know in every market you know every city there's that that one jingle that you hear over and over it's uh, kids singing it so it's uh, you know it burns into your soul in my area, it's call Blendon Sons at 753-7711. Heard that ever since I <laughs> was a wee kid. It's still on the radio today. Uh, all right, the power of marketing. Okay, so after we see her running in the forest, this looks like a... Uh, well, maybe I could help with a ship right crashing right. in yeah, water? Ship. Or ice. I think ice, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's breaking up, man. That looks like a rough landing. Woo! Breaking up is hard to do. <laughs> so, uh, and it looks like that's uh, it, it. I can't tell who's reacting to that. You see, he's a Jedi. Is oh, I Matt? think that's this. That's this. That's the the main that's, guy. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's Master Soul. Yeah. He got soul. This is about power. And who is it? That's that mother again. Mm -hmm. Talking about power. This is about and power. so she probably has some sort of, you know, being a witch, she probably connects to the force in some way. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people look at the, you know, other force users look at the Jedi as an organization who sort of monopolizes the force, you know? Yeah. And uh, so uh, she probably wants the for you know, force for everyone, you know, and, and the Jedi have it sort of locked up in a box and you could only access it if you followed their rules. And who is allowed to use it? What is that? Cool sequence. The red bladed saber flying through the forest, slicing trees. Yeah, wow. This is this is intense. So they're building this up. You know, there's there seems to be some dialogue here about the Jedi controlling who's able to wield the force. And then the next thing you know, we see a little standoff, and then the young Jedi are in some sort of maybe a cave, or I don't know, some kind or just of somewhere in the forest, yeah, yeah, or somewhere in the forest. And did you hear that? And then there's a 
red blade that just comes tearing through, chopping down trees, and then ends up in the hand of a mysterious cloaked figure. And all the blades, a lot of yellow blades, Jim. A lot of yellow blades, blue, yeah. blue blade, green blade. I like all it. All drawn. That, with, you know, seeing all the sabers like that, you know, it, it kind of makes me flash back to the old Tales of the Jedi comic from Dark Horse, not the animated series of shorts that's on Disney+. Mm. Plus. Back in the 90s, the Tales of the Jedi comic. And uh, yellow was a prominent blade in the pages of those books, along with many Jedi using them. And uh, it looks pretty dope. I mean, the way this all um, looks, you know, I just love, we haven't seen this many Jedi on screen since uh, probably Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Um, all on the screen at the same time. So uh, I think that looks pretty good. I don't, you know, some something tells me there's some trailer trickery going on here where the scene with the red saber blade being chucked through the forest is disconnected from this sequence here. Uh, uh, okay. You think I so? I, I, a lot I, of people it's cut to show it's cut as if this is a response you know, all of these blades being drawn is a response to the red blade cutting through the the trees. But you're right. right. They're very well could be. Yeah. They, they, yeah. You never know. And of course, there's the burden on this show to stick to canon. And in The Phantom Menace, Kiari Mundi says the Sith have been extinct for over a millennium. So this can't be a confrontation with a Sith Lord with Jedi. If any of these Jedi are to walk away from this, this little confrontation, I mean, um, maybe well, they all go down. They can't report back that they encountered a Sith, or maybe this isn't a Sith at all. We've seen red bladed warriors who are not Sith in star Wars. Look no further than Asajj Ventress herself. She was not a Sith. She worked with the Sith, but she was never a Sith per se. Okay. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, Darth Plagueis, the novel, is, is not canon. We know that. However, we know that Darth Plagueis is canon. And we can assume that Darth Plagueis was Palpatine's mentor, was Palpatine's master. Does mm -hmm. that imply that Plagueis was, you know, he was, he was also, again, not, not according to official canon, but in the novel, he was a, a, a businessman. He was a he was a a, a, a gangster. He was um, he was out there in the public eye, but he was obviously no one knew that he was a Sith. So when Kiati Mundi said that, here's how I interpreted it. Even back then, was. Yeah, you thought they were extinct for a millennium. That's the official narrative. That's the official line of the Jedi Council. Oh, he hasn't been mm -hmm. a Sith for a millennium. Right. But the the cloud of the dark side has has fallen on the Jedi mm -hmm. and difficult to see, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I guess I always interpreted it as if that was Kiati sort of towing the line, sort of being a bit naive. But we as the viewer know that, no, the Sith have been active and plotting and working their way to essentially topple you. But you also bring up a good point about, well, what is a Sith? You, you've got dark side users out there that they're not necessarily Sith. Palpatine was clearly a Sith, which would make his master, Plagueis, a Sith. And arguably his master, Tenebris, a Sith. So not necessarily been extinct for a millennium. Well, yes. I mean, that's just from his perspective. I always saw Kiati Mundi was just, he was presenting the, the facts as far as the Jedi knew them. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. They were, they were pretty well convinced that the Sith had been extinguished. I mean, the threat of the dark side always remains. Sure. But Sith as, as an as as a, a way of following the force and, and and being an organization of any sort, they, they thought that those days were long behind them, and they thought all the Sith were dead, and with them all of the mysteries of the Sith. Right. But little did they know, but the things were happening behind the scenes with the rule of two, 
And uh, we as an audience knew that, but I was assuming the Jedi were a little ignorant about all of that. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that has naive, to be maintained. Blind. Mm -hmm. That really does need to be maintained in this show. So if they have an encounter with a red-bladed warrior, then um, they're going to have to come up with some rationale as to why that particular opponent isn't a Sith. Right. There's going to have to be some plausible deniability here that 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 is uh, maybe a dark side user, but but not a Sith. So that Kiati, 100 years later, can hold on to that line that, no, yeah. hey, we wiped them out. Right. We wiped them right. out. Yeah. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. All right. Yeah. Well, we uh, the burden is on the storytellers, and I think they know that. So, yeah, I think yeah. they're aware of it. I mean, didn't George Lucas have to deal with. Uh, General Grievous uh, never encountering um, Anakin, Anakin before. Skywalker yeah. until Revenge of the Sith. But yet he followed up the films with the Clone Wars series. And so he had to make sure that Anakin and Grievous avoided each other throughout the entire seven season run <laughs> of the Clone Which Wars. I'm so happy that they did because then that makes that moment in... Uh, revenge of the sith all all the better after you've watched all the clone wars and you've seen them narrowly miss each other oh my god to have been a fly on the wall in the lucasfilm writers room there at skywalker ranch when george threw out the idea that well, it would probably be cool to have anakin face off and grievous here in this episode when, when uh, and then all of a sudden what is it, Filoni? You're getting all twitchy. <laughs> George. <laughs> what would he say? What would he say to George? Uh, George, uh, uh, you, you might remember that uh, in Revenge of the Sith, uh, you know, uh, Anakin hadn't actually met Grievous before. He said he expected Anakin would be uh, a little older. Remember mm -hmm. that? George chews on his pencil for a second, rubs his beard, stands up and says, well, that sounds like a you problem. I'm out of here. <laughs> he takes off. He goes to I'll Monaco to do the Grand years. Prix. <laughs> I'm off to Monaco. <laughs> see you later, Gator. Next, he's wearing those khaki shorts and that long-sleeved plaid shirt. <laughs> That's a you problem. Oh, man. <laughs> so, all right uh, so back to the this, uh, trailer. not much longer sabers are, oh that was important it, it appears to slow big, this like, down red explosion of some sort erupts Ooh, like mist mm. yes and it topples over all of these very gung-ho jedi yeah they come running towards the yep and the mist just blows them back and in the midst of it is an unknown figure yeah Looks like that fight's over before it even begins. Right. Kind of like you Tyson go. versus Michael Spinks. Boom. Hey, Hit can I cameras. can I throw out a gripe here? Sure. When I saw this. I was I was like, why is the O in the in the animated version of the logo? Why is that O a ring? I'm not gonna. Uh, there's not gonna be a ring in this, is there? Oh, it kind of does spin around like Doesn't it, it looks like a ring you would put on your finger. Right, right. Like, oh, is this going to be the ring to rule all the Jedi? <laughs> that means like, that means something else, man. <laughs> One ring, my precious. You know, what my what I precious. Well, if that's the only complaint you have, you are uh, in a much better headspace than about uh, seventy-five percent of Star Wars fans on the internet this week. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Many of them are losing their crap over this thing. I don't know. I thought the it, it looked great. It looked good. It it wasn't great. It didn't like melt my face or blow me away. But I mean, it certainly presented a lot of cool elements for a Star Wars TV show. You know, I saw one person go, I don't know. The trailer for the new Alien film blows us out of the water. Well, you know, one is a film and the other is a streaming series on TV. It's there is a difference. There's there two different things. I'm not trying to make any excuses or anything, but I just, you know, thought that was an apples to oranges sort of argument. I agree. Not only is one a film and one a TV series, they're completely different 
franchises with different visual languages, with <laughs> different themes, different vibes. Come on. 